John 6.15 Jesus ergo, cum cognoviset, quia venturi essent, ut raperent eum, et facerent eum regem, fugit iterum in montem ipsa solus. Therefore, Jesus, when he had perceived or understood that they were going to come in order that they might take him away and make him king, withdrew again to the mountain by himself. Well, the first thing that you might notice about this verse is that we've got a whole mess of subjunctive verbs. What are we going to do with those? How should we translate them into English? And why do they exist in these spots in the first place? How are they functioning? Those are going to be the main questions as we look at this verse, though there are a couple other things to mention as well. Before we get into those other things, I want to mention the use of the word fugit here. Literally, generally, it means fled, to flee away, uh, to run away from a particular place, usually in a context of some kind of danger or threat. And Erasmus points out that a better translation of the Greek here would be something like sekesit, or se subduxit, which are both expressions which mean more or less he withdrew or sort of took himself away from there, which avoid the connotation here, the possible connotation of fugit, which definitely is not in the Greek that in some sense Jesus had to get out of there because of uh, a feeling of being threatened. So Erasmus, I think, here objects on lexical grounds saying, Really, the idea here is that he withdrew himself kind of in a controlled way. He's not, he's not running away in terror or something like that, which someone might suppose uh, from, the use, from the translator's use of this particular Latin word. It's a very minor point. It's nitpicking a little bit. But I think it's interesting for us to look over Erasmus's shoulder because of his great skill in Latinity and because of how clearly and deeply he thought about each individual word, the, the diction of the Latin Vulgate. It's interesting to look over his shoulder, considering his vast experience and learning, and see how these different words struck him and what he thought would be better. So we can agree or disagree with him, but I think that's interesting and worth noting. Ipsa solos here at the end very closely mirrors the Greek text, as this whole verse does in every spot, as usual with the Vulgate. He himself, by himself, went off again to the mountain, onto the mountain, we should say. And we've got in plus accusative there, as we've seen before. Now let's look at these subjunctives. The first occurs in a cum clause, okay? A cum circumstantial clause. When we want to give the general conditions under which something happens, rather than a specific moment in sort of calendar time, we can use cum, but we need to use the subjunctive mood with it. In this case, we've got a pluperfect subjunctive. So literally, when he had perceived, when he had understood. And what we would get here in classical Latin would be an indirect statement, just as we do here. But we get it with the accusative infinitive construction, most likely. But in the Vulgate, as we've seen many times, Indirect statements are more often introduced by quia or quad or quonium. It's not that the accusative infinitive construction never appears in the Vulgate. It does. It just doesn't appear very often. This is the preferred construction. And it's in an imitation, by the way, of the Greek haughty, introducing indirect speech. This is more or less a Latin attempt at a near equivalent. So... Very often when this sort of situation occurs, when we've got indirect statement introduced by quia, the verb following the quia, which expresses what's being reported, goes in the subjunctive mood. And in this case, we've got a further wrinkle, which is this phrase, when turi essent, is paraphrastic. That is, it's, a, it's an optional sort of roundabout way of indicating something that is anticipated in the future but all from the perspective of the past. So Jesus, when he had perceived, okay, so we're, we're in the past already, the, the greater past, by the way, there's going to be something more past, which is cognoviset, and then some things which are less past, raperant et facerant. 
But from the perspective of that more past moment when he had perceived something, he, Jesus, the speaker here, uh, or the thinker rather, of what is reported in indirect discourse, is looking ahead to the future from this very past point and saying, they are going to, they are about to do this thing. And this corresponds again to a particular kind of Greek expression that you can see if you've got your Greek New Testament. And I think it would be instructive for you to compare there as it gives you a way to kind of get inside the head of our Latin translator. But all you need to know for the moment is when turi essent is a paraphrastic way of expressing the future with a form of sum esse plus a future participle. That's what venturi is from the verb venio, venire. It's in the subjunctive for the reason that I mentioned. And then these two things together are indicating, again, something that's like a hypothetical future from the perspective of this more past moment, cognoviset. So when Jesus had perceived that, we would say in English translation, they, the people, were going to come in order that, and now we've got two simple purpose clauses, okay? In order that they might, number one, snatch or seize him, and this is Jesus here, and number two, purpose, that they might make him king, that they might crown him king of Israel, in other words. So a word about the tenses here. We've talked about how cognoviset is more past than past. When turi essent is indicating something in the future from that more past perspective. And then we've got raperent et facerent in the imperfect subjunctive, both of them. And the imperfect subjunctive in the sequence of tenses indicates something that happens at the same time as or subsequent to, future to, the action of the main verb. So when he recognized or perceived that they were going to come in order that they might, in the future from the perspective of his perception, seize him and make him king, then finally he did something in the indicative, thank goodness, Fugit, or with Erasmus, we might better say, Sekeset, Iterum in Montem, Ipsa Solus.